way. Oh shoot, I went the wrong way. I'm gonna get into this campsite I've never been in before. Looks well, pretty cool. Wow, that water is super clear. I just got a peek at the, the lake. Holy cow, that water is like a pool. I'm at this park kind of late. I guess we'll see if we have to check in or not. I don't know. Be right back. Okay, I guess they quit working at five. And it is six. Take the park pass, set it up there. What's going on, YouTube fam? Mikey here. Uh, going in the wrong direction, apparently. Shooting another high adventure video, though. We are at a brand new lake here in South Carolina. We're actually way up north at Lake Jocassi, which is a very deep lake. One second, day use, single vehicles, pick up campgrounds. That's what we're after. Um, it's a very deep lake. And from what I just got a sneak peek of, uh, it's a very um, cold and clear lake as well. And right now I'm lost. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to be downright honest with you. Campgrounds, quiet hours are from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Oh man, so we can create ruckus for the next four hours. Yes. I'm guessing we're going this way? I'm not a tenter. I mean, actually I technically am. Tent in the bed of the truck. I want electricity. Wait, there's seven. Oh, is that eight? Oh, that's six. Never mind. Ah, here's eight. Oh, we found it. Yes. All right, let's back it up like a Tonka truck. Oh, hush. Holy cow, keep it straight, Micah. Good grief. That looks good. All right. We made it. All right. Let's take a look at camp here. Oh. All right, I guess this works. As you guys can see, not a lot of people here. In fact, hardly anybody here. There are a few people up there. That's about it. It is uh, it is a very quiet campground. You're not gonna find this campground like this very often. About the only time of year you probably will. <sighs> oh, do we have running water? Oh, look at that. And we've got electricity which is what I need. Oh, check out this. Check out this foxy fire pit, which is awesome, actually, with grill grate. We're gonna need that, and I have a handy doodle little uh, camper table. Nice. So this is just for tonight. Tomorrow, my plan is to be spending the night out on the boat, which, you know, up here in the mountains, it's quite a bit colder so, I don't know if I'm going to end up regretting that decision, but I only have this campground for tonight, so <laughs> I guess we're all in at this point. Here we go. Well, I had this all bundled up nicely. However, not anymore. I had it neatly wrapped in this twine. Look at that. Well, hopefully that's not a sign of how the rest of the camping trip's gonna go. Well, there you go. Get over there. You're so close. So close. Oh, so here's something fun I discovered. So apparently the cord to my depth finder on the trolling motor snapped, but it didn't snap in the area I thought it would. I thought, if anything, it would get cut by the blades, but no, it snapped all the way up here, which has me thinking it must have gotten pinched on this at some point, maybe when it dropped down. Like, that's the only thing I can think of. So, I don't even think I can, like, rewire that myself. That looks like totally something. I'm just gonna have to, like, take this off and get a new one. Well, the trip's not starting out ideally. Well, I'll be honest with you guys. But in the spirit of high adventure, we will carry on. So maybe you guys haven't figured this out by now, but actually my tent for my boat is actually my truck bed tent. So 
just a versatile little tent. It fits perfectly in the bed of the truck and in the hole of my boat. So pretty foxy little tent. Welcome to the night's lodgings. Ugh. Cozy sleeping bag, extra blanket, and pillow. Whew. That'll do. Let's see. I have, oh, I have cookies. My wife made me like a dozen cookies. I'm down to two. And I just got here. Mm. I can't help it. They're so good. Jeez, did I even wrap this thing? Okay, yeah, I did. Come on, you. There we go. Here we go. Got our extension cord for our power. That'll be nice. I'll show you what we have that for here in a minute. Secondary power cord here. Right there. This will lead to the onboard charging kit we have for the boat. Make sure we got full battery for tomorrow. One of the more Importante pieces of equipment while I'm up here. The mini electric heater, which is basically why we brought this. So we could charge stuff and have a nice little heater all night because I've got a feeling it's gonna get cold. There's something almost magical about a good campfire. Don't know what it is, but it's just really nice. All right, I'm feeling fancy tonight. We're gonna make some Zatarans jambalaya. Let's see, mix two and a half cups of water, two and a half cups of water. I don't even know how much, uh, uh it looks like about right. Uh, let's see, a tablespoon of vegetable oil or olive oil. That's probably about a tablespoon. What the heck? Almost got destroyed by the bag. And for the main protein, Polska Kielbasa. There we go. We gotta bring that to a boil and then cover it. Keep the fire going in the meantime. Oh my, that looks really good. Solid jambalaya for, for camping in the mountains. Smells pretty good. Oh man, that's so good though. That's so good. This is definitely an upgrade from uh, weenies and beans, that's for sure. Right by the facilities here, we're gonna see if uh, they have any showers. Whoa! This is a big old shower, good grief. Any spiders? Not this time of year. Oh, which one do I want? That one looks kind of shabby. Let's go with the other one. Let's see if the water's hot first, I guess we should see. Make sure. Sometimes, like, the showers won't work depending on the time of year because of like, just they're not enough campers out so they won't keep them up, like maintain them. Come on, get hot for me. It's running, so that's good. Oh, enjoying the last shower that I'm gonna have for the next 24 hours. Oh, the hot water feels really good. It's still pretty chilly up here in the mountains. Of course, it's still February. 
Oh, got the little heater on full blast. I'm gonna zip this up most of the way. And then what we'll do is we're gonna leave a little crack open behind the heater so then it can draw cold air or fresh air, I should say, out the back, pump it through here. And then we've got a few of the flaps open up top so it can just all circulate. But there you go. Get off the shoes and chill. I actually go to bed. <laughs> oh, I mean, I've got all kinds of room in here. Got the heater going, got a few lights on, charging up some batteries for tomorrow. I mean, got our bag in here. Got a twin size mattress. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty sweet. This is pretty, uh, pretty luxury camping. Well guys, hoping for a big day of high adventure tomorrow. So we better get some sleep. Catch you guys in the morning. Let's go fishing. Holy cow, guys, look at how clear that water is. That's like, it's probably like, I don't know, 20 foot visibility, that's nuts. Oh my word. Okay, great, that's like, that's like crystal clear. Clear water is always a little bit of a challenge for catching fish, but it's not gonna stop us today. Well, she's floating. I guess that means we'll go fishing. Ah. All right, got a little fresh coffee there mmm breakfast cliff bar peanut butter flavored all right mm. got our unnecessarily large flying down the lake glasses on let's go Alright, first off, wow, this place is beautiful. I can't imagine what this is going to look like, like when it's warmer. With all these trees full, I mean, it's pretty now. But when all the trees are full, like this place would be phenomenal. We're going to have to come back here when it's warmer. So today we are fishing pretty much blind. Um, I've never fished this lake before, so I don't know. Alright, you know what I think we're going to start with? Ooh, I'm going to start with a jerkbait. Which one though? Uh, you know, we'll go with a little bit smaller one. There are a lot of brown trout, spotted bass, and rainbow trout in this reservoir. Since I haven't fished this lake before, I'm kind of just trying to take the knowledge that I have from fishing for trout in Idaho and just using it here. Now, a big difference though, is that in Idaho, we fish rivers predominantly for the trout, not lakes that are like 350 feet deep and ultra clear. So we'll just see how this goes. Like, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really just kind of firing from the hip here and hoping that, that uh, something will work. Now, from my understanding, these fish feed a lot on blueback herring. And this time of year, the herring, the bait fish basically, they school up back up in these, uh, I think I just saw a fish jump over there. Good sign. Um, but they school back up in these little creeks is what they call them. Because I can, yeah, I can hear a waterfall. In fact, I might be able to see it. I hear water rushing there and I almost swear there's some water coming in from over there. Anyway, we're gonna look for waterfalls in the backs of these creeks. And that's what we're gonna try fishing. One of the more popular ways to fish this lake is with like downriggers and stuff. And obviously, I have nothing like that here on the John boat. But this time of year, 
um, you can fish for them because they, the, all the fish are shallower because of the cold temperatures and they don't move down to like 90 feet, 120 feet, that kind of thing, like they are in the summertime. So we're kind of getting in on this right at a good time. Hopefully anyway, knock on wood. There we go. As my bro would say, first cast. I want to try to get as far a cast as I can because in this uber clear water, I want that bait to be far away from me. Look at that big old piece of fallen timber. Holy cow. That's pretty cool to see in this ultra clear water. Yeah, there's definitely more water running in back here. There are, there, there are a lot of places with like springs or little rivers and stuff running into here. Hey, we're coming up on our first waterfall up here. Check this out. Get a little closer. This is what I like seeing. Try to get right up on those falls back there. What a beautiful waterfall. Just cascading down over those rocks. That's gorgeous. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's anything hanging out by it that wants to jump on this jerk bait. It's still a pretty sight though. Oh, look at that, it's a big eagle, a big eagle. Whoa, that's cool. He was just sitting right up in that tree. That's pretty sweet. I mean, that's gotta be good luck, right? I mean, we just had a big old bald eagle fly over us. I hear some big water back there. Might be a big old waterfall. Oh my word, there is a big waterfall back there. Holy cow. That's impressive. Let's fish this. We gotta head back to that. Oh my goodness. This is so cool. Anybody hanging out back there in that little pool area? Whoa. Totally like opens up back here. Any trout hanging around? No fish, but that's pretty sweet. All right guys, let's go ahead and find some more waterfalls. And there's a really pretty little waterfall back there. Not as big as the last one we were at, but dang, that's really cool. Finding all kinds of cool little places around here. Let me start finding some more fish. Be winning, winning bigly. Oh, there's a trout. Oh, that would look like a nice trout. Guys, I just had a nice trout followed up. That was big, that was a big one. That looked like a 15 incher. Now, I don't know, but it looked like a decent sized fish. Oh, there's one. Oh, dang it, one just swiped at it. Just swiped at it. That bloody awful cast. I want to try that again. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, he just came up and nailed it. Whoa. What is it? What is it? Is it a brownie? Oh, I can't tell. He thrashed too much. This is a nice sized fish, though. Come here. Yes. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Oh, there we go. Popped himself out. Let's hold him up against the measuring board. Yeah. They're a little bigger. That one's almost 14. Actually, that nose is right on the 14. So we're getting there. Hey, we're making our way to that 15 inch mark. Pretty fish, pretty fish. Chopper back in. There we go. 
here we go all right guys good sign had a couple of couple of swipes over there fish right there you know i wasn't even jerking that one i just was reeling it straight in he came up and just annihilated it we're gonna take it nice and easy working our way back to the waterfalls we're gonna fish this uber thoroughly see if there's some more back here there ought to be it's a good start to this new spot Whoa, you see that? Oh, see, look, look at that. There's a trout. He's not very big. He's just coming up and slamming something on the surface. Oh, there's one right there. Right there. Oh, good fish. Good fish. Wait, wait. This looks like a bass. This looks like a bass. Oh, yeah, it is. Whoa, I can see it way down there. Guys, I think it's one of those spotted bass. Oh, yeah, this is one of those spotted bass right here. Check this out. Bonus. Bonus. Come here, you. Yes, look at that. Look at that. A nice spotted bass. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I happen to know that you can keep any size spotted bass at this lake. I don't know why. I'm guessing that means there's a, just a massive population of them here, so they don't mind thinning out the herds a little bit. But we might cook this one up right here. Look at this. Look at that. That's probably pound and a half. One of the ways you could tell spotted bass is because the top fins are connected as you guys could see there both those fins are connected and oftentimes this line you can kind of see is almost a little bit broken like big blotch big blotch big blotch well let me see if i can get a good shot here there you go yeah like you see big blot dark spot dark spot dark spot dark spot so you could tell it's not just your regular large mouth but the main giveaway from what i understand is those fins up there being connected so awesome i think we might throw him on a stringer and cook up a little bass later on Keep them on the metal stringer, keep them alive. I don't sure why I keep trusting this metal stringer. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have no good, <laughs> no good reason to, but that's the one good stringer I have right now. And he's not terribly big. It's not a big old like catfish or something like that. But all right, guys. All right, let's try to back off here a little bit. And let's keep working this, uh, working this back area. Produced two fish so far. See if there are any spawners back up in there. Is that one? Is it a fish? Or did I hook a stick? I can't tell. I think I hooked a stick. No, it's a fish. That's a fish. Oh, it's a bass. That's another bass. It was just running right towards me. Nice. Oh, come on. Keep me away from the way. Way back up there. Whoa. Whoa. Look at that. Oh, oh she's tangled up on the stream. Come on. Down this way. Another one. They must be moving up here. They must be pre-spawn. Must be a pre-spawn. Because I saw a big old bass come out from under a tree. And now we got this guy as well. Look at that. Oh, it's another nice one. Another nice one on that jerk bait. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Just hammered that jerk bait. I thought I hooked a stick, but it was swimming right towards me. That's for sure a spotted bass right there. 100%. 100%. There we go. Look at that. That's probably close to two pounds right there would be my guess. That's a solid fish. That's a real solid fish. I think we'll let this one go. We've got one on the stringer. I think we'll let this one go. Pretty fish. That's awesome, guys. All right, we're gonna make our way out of this uh, little creek area. I've tied on this little white uh, crankbait. It actually has that blue back, kind of almost would remind me of a blue back herring, which is, like I said, what they predominantly feed on, both trout and bass. And I'm hoping, I think this one dives, I think this is eight to 10 feet. Maybe that extra three or four feet down, produce a few more fish, we'll find out. Oh, there's one right there, right there, right there on the, on the uh, crankbait. Looks like a trout, looks like a trout. Nice, anchor it up, anchor it up. That's what I'm talking about. Doesn't look terribly huge. That's the first fish on the cranker. Probably about another 13 incher. There you go. I guarantee, uh, what are we at? Approximately, that's like another about 13 incher. About another 13 inch or pretty, pretty fish. There she goes. Come on, I know there's some bigger ones in there though. I know it. 
I've seen pictures of guys like plugging five and seven pound brown trout out of here now. Maybe they've gone deeper for them. But uh, I mean, if I'm, if I'm catching them out here, you gotta think that there's gotta be a few big ones that are up in this water column. I mean, gotta be scattered around. All right, I've got something kind of weird going on here. So I bought these sweet little swim baits, which are awesome. The problem is, is they're really light like almost too light. So I put a little Texas rig sinker on them. And what I'm gonna do, just for fun, is I'm gonna throw this out behind the boat, just like, like that right there. And then I'm gonna just stick it in the rod holder. We're gonna loosen the drag. There we go. I'm gonna just stick it in the rod holder because I have this other rod out and I have switched back to a jerk bait, but this time I have a little white jerk bait to try to mimic maybe some of that bait fish moving around here. And I'm gonna just beat the banks with the jerk bait. We've got this guy cruising out behind us and we're doubling our efforts. I know a lot of people here, like the main way people fish for the trout is actually trolling like spoons and live bait. So it's not a spoon, but uh, that little swim bait looks pretty sweet. So I don't know, hopefully, uh, oh, oh. Hopefully we'll get something on it worth a shot. Just kind of having to experiment around and see what these fish want. Maybe there's a certain pattern that's better than others. So far this jerkbait pattern though has been pretty solid. Look at that cast though. Sitting back in these draws, this wind can't make up its mind which direction it wants to come from. Wait, do we have one? Or is that the bottom? Do we hook a fish? We've got one. We got one on the swim bait. How about that? Just letting it hang out behind the boat. All right. I'm gonna anchor this up. <laughs> I can't believe that worked. We got him. Feels like a solid fish. No, 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 no. What are you doing? What are you doing? Hold up. I said anchor, you fool. Anchor. Where is he? Feels pretty weighty. Oh yeah, that's a nice trout. That's a nice trout. I think this is a keeper. I think this is a keeper. Oh, come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. That's a keeper. Yes! Look at that! Awesome! All right! Oh, I'm not guarantee you that's a keeper right there. Oh, but that might be like 16 inches. Check that out. Beautiful brown trout. Look at that. Look at that. Right, oh, settle down. Look at that. Right in the corner of the mouth. Let's measure it up. I think that's gonna be 15. I think we're gonna have to eat some trout tonight. <laughs> that's awesome. Pops right out. Here we go. Oh man, this guy's a lively little devil. Here we go. Gotta be 15. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I think it is. I think it is. Whoa, 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 stop. Oh yeah. Right there. Look at that. Oh yeah. Just a, just a, maybe an eighth of an inch past 15 inches. Whoa. Sweet. We got ourselves a nice trout to eat. Let's get him on the stringer. That's awesome. There we go. Boom, we got a little bass, little trout. <laughs> nice. That's sweet. Let's get it back out there. Let's keep going. Dang it. Maybe that was the key. Maybe I should have been doing this all day. Oh, there's one right there. Right there. Trout. Popped it on the paws. Not a big one, but another one. The little guys might be the smallest one we've caught. Another brown though. Whoa, 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 whoa. Chill out. That's a pretty one right there. Got like a really hooked jaw. Where are the pliers? Oh, uh, there we go. Hey, that was easy. Man, that wind's picking up. There, oh, I think I missed one right there. There he is, right there. Haha, <laughs> came back for it. Another little one. I like totally foul hooked this guy. 
Oh yeah, like right in the top of the head. Good grief. You know, I got, I had one swipe and then it swiped again. My guess is he was just swiping at it and just, that's how we hooked him. He didn't actually get it, eat it. There you go, there you go. There she goes. Man, that jerk bait's putting in work. Absolutely crushing these fish, that's awesome. All right, I have decided to go ahead I cook a little dinner. I have both of the lines out. They both have the little swim bait that I caught actually our keeper trout on. So I've just got those trolling behind the boat. Figured, hey, if it worked once, maybe it'll work again. I don't know. But we're going to get this out. Last couple times I've gone out and done this boat tent camping. I'll make dinner after I set up camp, but I figure we switch it up this time. Whoa, gas is on somewhere. Oh, Ooh. anyway, I figured we'd switch it up this time, eat a little bit, plus then that gives me an opportunity to have second supper later on. <laughs> Here we go. We are going to try some spotted bass for the very first time. Now, I have bled him out, so he's dead, but you can start, you can see there's those spots a lot better now. Be able to get some nice steaks off of the starting to head into evening time so I'm kind of hoping oh look, this is a female yeah this is like there's like a pre-spawn I think that's why we're getting them up so shallow I think it's like a pre-spawn they're feeding they're feeding before they're hitting the bed all right look at that got some nice meat there oh yeah that'll be real nice got some solid steaks off that bass that wasn't even a very big one probably like I said maybe a pound and three quarters or so just got a little canola oil we'll start with first bit of bass whoa yeah that's plenty ready i'm just gonna do this with some blackened seasonings from zatarans on that side and we're gonna hit it with a little salt pretty simple nothing too crazy season the other side as well still keeping an eye on both fishing rods we're just gonna kind of troll back and forth i've had really good success just right up in this little ravine here so we might just kind of troll in and out both sides of this uh this little chasm here. It's like 70 feet right there. It's incredible. Check that out right there. Kind of almost a little bit, well, not quite blackened. Smells good. Spotted bass for the first time. Here we go. It's not quite as flaky as like a crappie, but it's not as meaty as like a catfish. It's like right in between. It doesn't really seem to taste like anything as far as like, it's got its own flavor. I don't taste bad at all. Of course, that blackened seasoning, that that wins every time, just about. But really good on the on the spotted bass here. Look at us sitting here cooking up a little supper on the deck, trolling some lines for some trout. Mmm, eating fresh fish. This is indeed a high adventure. Mmm. I don't know. I'm gonna put the old heavy pants back on here. Man, I'm excited for the heat again. I'm kind of tired of wearing all this long sleeves and long pants stuff. Well, nothing else trolling. I think we're gonna go find our camp spot. Guys, get a load of this. I saw this on the way in and I thought, oh, we're gonna have to come back and check this out. But look at this waterfall. You kid me? That's beautiful. Let's get a little closer and take a look. I figure tonight we should totally fall asleep with a beautiful waterfall 
in the background. Look at that, isn't that pretty? Oh man, imagine what this would look like with all the trees all full and green. I mean, it's beautiful now. I definitely need to get back here in the summertime because that would be so much fun to come and see and maybe even like swim over to and just like hang out in these waterfalls. Just another pretty one. There we go. Starting to come up a little bit. So the original plan was to camp like right next to the waterfalls. However, it's quite noisy. Um, as you could imagine, it's quite thunderous. So I decided to park out this way. I was actually gonna park a little bit closer than this, but it's literally like 88 feet right there. And, the, and I mean, it just, it, the, there's just walls on either side. So I'm trying to find a flat spot and this seems to be fairly flat, kind of right out here towards the tip of the point. I could still hear the waterfalls in the back. Actually, it's a little bit nicer because like, they're just kind of off in the distance a little bit, but still noisy enough to where it should lull us to sleep tonight without like, just absolutely drubbing us to death with all the noise. First anchor away. Perfect. Run back here. Get this anchor down. Whoosh -ah! Perfect. Uh, just set that there. Set this here, I guess. We're just clearing the deck space, as you guys can see. So, we can set up ye old tent again, this time in the bed of the boat. Got our lights on. Oh wait, I got one more set of lights to turn on. Check this out. You guys ready for the magic? I installed these myself. Zoink! <laughs> anyway, that's pretty awesome. It is actually nice to have that extra bit of light. All right, speaking of light, Looks like the sun's just gone down. Let's go ahead and get this tent set up here. Here we go, back out she comes. A little bit smaller than the bed of my truck, but it still fits and that's all that counts. It's definitely a little challenging setting the tent up on the boat because like you just have limited space. So I have to like pre-plan how I'm gonna do stuff because then it's very difficult. I have to walk around along the side railings here to access the back. Speaking of which, I gotta take these off. And that is a very, very tricky process. One wrong move and you're in the drink. Okay, okay. See, it's taking shape. It's taking shape. There we go. All right, and the last pole is the front one. Last part, boom, there it is. Clip one and clip two. There we go, the big reveal. Oh. All right, now we can start moving our stuff in, like this guy. The heater, arguably this time of year, the most important piece of equipment. Here we go, the bed. Man, once it gets warmer, I'm not gonna need all this bedding, like, the bed sheet, the extra blanket, the sleeping bag. I'll probably ditch the sleeping bag and all I'll need is like a blanket because it's gonna be so warm. We got this little guy here. She has 86% power. Let's get the old twin mattress blown up here. Power on. There we go. As always, shoes off before you go inside. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah. Oh. This is what I'm talking about. A little less space than being in the bed of the truck. However, I can't fish from the bed of the truck. Check it out, honey. There is the view from my window. We step out here and we say good morning or good evening world. Best seat in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Wherever I want it to be. Beautiful little waterfall in the background. This is nice. You know, I just realized I'm going to have probably a phenomenal view of the sunrise in the morning. I mean, it'll take it maybe an extra 30 minutes to get over those mountains over there. But I mean, there you go. No neighbors, nobody playing obnoxiously loud music. I was in the campground the other night 
and it wasn't close by, but maybe a hundred yards away, I could hear somebody's dog just I mean, we've all been there. If you've camped in a campground, you know what I'm talking about. And it was one of those owners, I could just tell, like, they didn't care. One of those people would just be like, well, that's just what owning a dog's all about. It's like, well, you could train your dog a little bit, like put a little effort into it. But none of that out here. All I have to listen to is the waterfall, maybe a lake loon here or there, an owl, potentially, just nature. <sighs> Nobody's campfire smoke like blowing right into my camp. No campfire actually out here. No fires on the boat. That's uh, that's rule number two, I think actually, in the manual for boat camping. Head back on inside here. This is pretty sweet guys. Pretty sweet living out here on the water. Definitely a high adventure. I almost forgot we have these sweet little newer lights, which we also attach to our poles right here. Again, guys, I have links to a lot of this stuff in the description of the video below, including my merchandise, like my sweet octopus necklace. Just throwing that out there, turn that down to 40. Look at that, light in the front of the boat up. I have to say the one thing that I wish this tent had and maybe one of my subscribers know somebody, know something, hook me up, I don't know. But like I have obviously the front flap to get in and out to the bow, right? I don't know, but is there somebody out there that could custom cut a big flap right here so I could also access the back instead of having to walk along the edge there, the little four inch wide ledge? I don't know, maybe that's not doable, but I live in the Columbia, South Carolina area. If anybody knows of somebody that could do something like that, uh, hit me up. Hit me up in the comments below. Go follow me on Instagram and shoot me a direct message. Uh, if I could get a, a flap cut right here, just, just big enough to be able to crawl in and out of, to be able to access the back of the boat, we'd be pretty much like set with everything. That'd be like perfect. But as it is, I mean, I'm fine with, I mean, the, the bow of the boat's got plenty of room. We got plenty of space for all our stuff, obviously. And we've got quite a bit of stuff. I've still got to arrange this a little bit, but boy, if I could access through that way, that would be pretty sweet. All right. I told you guys we were going for second supper later on, which isn't much, but it's beef flavored ramen by Chef Wu. Oh, I didn't know, lovingly made in the USA. I did not realize a chef made, uh, Express ramen. A uh, vegetarian. Wait, it's vegetarian. Um, can you be vegetarian if you have beef flavored in it? I don't know. That seems, that seems like there's a line between vegetarian and not vegetarian. And it seems like Chef Wu is flirting with it here a little bit. He's dancing right on that line. Here we go. I'm going to pour that over the boat. But that's why right there. So pour water out all over everything. Here we go. All right, Chef Wu, come through for me, man. Ooh, that's hot, that's hot. There we go, put that there. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go, Chef Wu. It's all on <laughs> Wu. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Oh, okay, let's get serious. Serious about our beef ramen express. Here we go. Noodles are good. Time for the broth. Yeah, that's pretty good. Chef Wu, you did well. You did well. You know, I am missing my little dehydrated beef nuggets in here though. You know, that probably make up about a fourth of a gram of protein. I don't know, it's just something about that little chewy, chewy nugget of beef that just goes so well in a cup noodle. Well, I'd say our first day went pretty well. Having never fished this lake before, and actually really my first time ever seriously targeting trout here on the East Coast. I forgot how many we caught. What did we catch? Five or six brown trout today? One keeper in the slot size? I'm really happy. I'm really happy. So I've been adjusting my light out here on the bow to try to get a little more light in the tent and check out what I saw in the water. I 
I'm pretty sure those are the blueback herring. That's what all these trout and the spotted bass are feeding on. So it's good that we're up in these little creek areas because it seems like all the bait is still up in these creek areas. Now, an interesting thing about Lake Jocassia is actually you can't catch the bait in this lake. So like if I were like Lake Murray, like people would like throw out cast nets, put lights in the water like that, bring the herring around, then throw cast nets out and get their own bait. You're not allowed to do that here at Lake Jocassi, probably because it's a smaller lake would be my guess. And if you had people doing that, you'd probably kill the bait fish population pretty quickly. That's pretty cool. Kind of spooky. Something spooky about that, but that was pretty cool. All right, time for a little late night snack. Now, my wife's grandfather, Mr. Verl, enjoys my videos and he saw me make hot chocolate in one of my last camping videos and he suggested to me a spiced vanilla chai latte mix he said it'd be super simple to make on the boat so mr verl this is for you i have some of the said spiced vanilla chai latte i got it off of amazon uh, i'll probably have a link to that in the description below as well so i'm heating up some water we're gonna go ahead and pour this in for a little late night hot drink. Now what I like to do with a lot of my stuff is I like it rich and creamy. So I brought some whole milk as well. So I'm heating it up in water, but I'm also gonna add some whole milk to this just to give it that rich flavor. You don't have to, but you can heat it up in either milk or water or whatever. So I'm doing a little bit of a both. Look at this guys, look at that. You guys seeing that? It smells delicious. I'm on a boat in the mountain making spice vanilla chai. Like, I'm not exactly sure if we're really roughing it at this point. Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's really good actually. Mr. Verl for the win. Thank you, sir. This is delicious. <sighs> oh. Come on, baby. Yeah, there's the flame. Oh, and no time at all. This tent, I'll bet it'll be a cozy 65 degrees in here, no doubt. Hey, I'll take that over probably 39 out there. Oh yeah, that's nice right there. <laughs> Warm up the piggies a little bit. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, it's nice to have my feet warming up by the heater. However, this tent's gonna smell like my feet. So, with that in mind, We'll uh, temporarily warm up the Tootsies, but keep them away from the flame. I'm reading in the rule book again here, and yeah. Spotted bass, any length. Wow, in this lake, actually, you can keep up to 15 per person per day. I would say there's probably a pretty healthy spotted bass population then. Now, here's something interesting. Speaking about trout, it says unlawful to use or possess talking about lake jocassi unlawful to use or possess corn cheese fish eggs or imitations of them that's interesting i wonder if it's like so effective that it's almost like cheating now but here's the here's the weird thing to me i've heard of using corn for trout right i'm also obviously fish eggs but cheese i could honestly say i have never heard of using cheese to catch trout. Anybody out there ever use cheese for trout? Now I feel like I gotta go find a place that will let me use cheese and try using cheese. Like what What kind of cheese does a trout like? Maybe a, a stout cheddar? Maybe a stinky Limburger? I don't know, like a blue cheese? A robust blue cheese for trout? Oh, that's all, that's the way I catch my, my rainbow trout on a robust blue. I don't know, that's crazy to me. Well guys, I think it's time for some sleep. Getting late, plus I wanna go out and keep doing some more fishing tomorrow. So, guess I'll catch you guys in the morning. Well, the first thing I can tell you is we drifted a little bit. I mean, we're still in the same cove, but we seem to have swung around a little bit. We're still in the same, <laughs> same vicinity, so 
That's good. We got the heater still running. I bet we probably still have another hour or so at that, so we'll probably just keep letting it run so we can kind of escape out of the out of the cold. Oh yeah, it's still cold. I think we'll go ahead and get our warm weather gear. Woo! Woo! I'll put back on and get back out to the bow and make some breakfast here. Gonna make a little eggs, sausage. I think I'm gonna throw the rest of that pepper and that onion that we had from the jambalaya the other morning in with our eggs. We're gonna go fancy this morning. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make me a nice little feast here. Get the day started. Oh, probably make some coffee here as well. Let's see, where's my knife? I'll start with sausages and that'll get a little grease in the bottom of the pan. Then we can cook our eggs in the sausage grease. Of course, that'll taste delicious. Should, anyway. Those look about done. We'll just set them on the griddle. Go ahead and drop all of our onions and peppers in. Let those cook down a little bit. Ah, got our fancy little egg carrier. Check that out. I'm crack those eggs right into there. There we go. Just gonna mix that around in there. Put a little pepper in there, as well as some salt. All right, here we go. We'll just go ahead and toss our sausages right over top like that. Turn off the heat. Make a little space over here so we can move him off to the side there. Perfect. Now. Let's go ahead and get a little coffee going. There we go. Got a little fresh premium roast McCafe because we're fancy here at High Adventure Videos. Fresh hot sausage out here first thing in the morning. Mmm, cooked to perfection, if I do say so myself. I do. Mmm, it was a good hearty breakfast. Good way to start a good day. Let's see how that turned out. I think I stopped at a good time. Oh yeah, look at that. You see that color right there? Good, rich, medium dark, but not too dark. Well, got our fresh brew. I think it's time to go ahead and tear this beast down. Let's get turned back into a fishing vessel so we can go fish. According to my map, there is a little river that feeds in somewhere up here. I don't hear anything yet. Doesn't mean it's not there though, but this looks kind of similar to the last place we were fishing as far as a lot of the like lay downs in the water and stuff. So we'll make our way back. And right under the shade, big old logs and stumps and rocks and nothing. Kidding me? Guys, this place just looks juicy. However, I haven't even had like a follow. Man, are you serious right now? Nothing? Nothing? This is crazy. Looks like this is the end of the road too. That's crazy. Wow. I can't believe not even a, not even a, a follow. Well, let's see if we can back our way out of this here. Oh, hello big tree. Something just hit the surface right over there. That's like the first signs of life I've seen in this stretch. I mean, there gotta be fish in here. It's super narrow over here. Like it's, like this is one of the creeks that runs in to the main part. There he is, right there, of the lake. Nice. 
We got him. I saw something hit the surface over there. Feels like a solid fish. Feels like a really solid fish. What is it? Oh, this might be a bass. Yeah, it is a bass. It is a bass. What do you know? Check that out. Come here, you. That's not a bad one either. Nice. Another striped, or striped, spotted bass. You know, I think we might keep this one. That bass I ate last night was good. And this isn't very big, but it's not terribly small either. There we go. That's like a good eating size right there. That's probably like a pound and a quarter. Not very big, but not too small. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and throw that on the string or bring him home. There we go. Still got our trout. Finally, all right. Just took like an hour, but we found him. All right, we have two trolling lines out with our little uh, swim baits on them. I've still got this jerk bait on, and we're going to just rock and roll through this little canyon area. Oh, like right there, that, that might've been a bite. Might have. Well, there's some trout down there. Oh yeah, I just had some trout follow it up. Maybe dragging these behind. We'll get uh, some action here. Give it about a minute. And those will reach this area. Said, I think there were a couple of them down there following this. Oh, well there he is. See that right there? That's a fish. That's a fish. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Feels like a good fish. All right guys, fish on. Gotta tighten the drag a little bit. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. Oh, come on, baby. Oh man, what is it? Ooh, he hit the rod with the eight pound test line. Oh, it's coming up. I'll bet it's a bass. Bet it's a spotted bass. We have a good fish right here. Get the net ready. Get the net ready. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. This is a solid fish, whatever it is. Come on. Big old spotted bass. Big old spotted bass. Come on. Oh yeah, it's a nice fish right there. Yes, nice. Look at that. Trolling. Look at that piggy right there. Oh my heavens, look at that right in the side of the mouth. There's a nice fish. Here's a real nice fish. We gotta weigh this one up just for fun. Here we go, here we go. What do we got? 2.99 pounds, how about that? So basically, it, I, it was stuttering at 2.99 and I saw it go to 3.2. So in classic fisherman style, we're gonna call that a three pound, maybe four pound, it was closer to four. A pound spotted bass. Pretty fish, let's get it back in the water. There you go guys, another trout. This one might actually be a keeper. We'll see. Another trout, there we go, nice. That's another nice one. I'll bet that's 15. I switched to the spinner because I was just getting nothing on the jerk bait. Look at that. Hit that tiger pattern spinner. Oh, pretty fish, let's get him measured up. Y'all, it's been a long morning. It's the afternoon now and the bites pretty much died. I just got that one in the shade right along the side of the bank over there and uh, just popped him. Boom, that's a 15 incher, right at 15 inches. Just like the last one, the bottom jaw juts out right past the 15 inch mark. There we go. Couple of nice Lake Jocassi brown trout. Those are gonna taste real good. I think we're gonna take these home to the little ones. My kids love fish. 
probably throw them on the grill. I don't know, do something crazy. We always do something crazy with our recipes. Y'all, thank you so much for hanging out with me the last couple of days. This has been a blast. I think Lake Jocasta is gonna have to be a regular place that we visit. This has been a lot of fun. And I would say for our first time ever being here, I'd say we did pretty good. Didn't do too shabby at all. Caught our first ever trout here in South Carolina and caught our first ever spotted bass. I've never caught spotted bass before, so that was pretty sweet. Hope you guys had as much fun as I did. Thank you so much for hanging out with me the last couple of days. And as always, I will see you in the next one.